Hello everyone, my name is James Hummeler and I'm a local architect who runs a small practice in addition to periodically teaching studio at uh, UBC. Some of you may know me, but for those who don't, my practice focuses largely on public and institutional projects with the, with the occasional Fourier into multifamily or mixed use projects. Much of my work centers on the relationship of buildings to their context, often with a close dialogue between landscape and building. A significant component of the building context dialogue is looking at the long durée of a project's life cycle beyond just its immediate conception. This arises in part from my 15 or so years of work on archaeological excavations around the Mediterranean, where our only record lies in the events that shaped the place of study captured through the stratigraphy of time. Even in the best preserved projects, rarely are represented with a coherent story but instead remnants of the moments in the site's life. In light of my background, I'm excited to collaborate with you all in developing ideas for the preservation of Ontario Place in Toronto, an entertainment complex on the waterfront. Many will know the site, but Ontario Place consists of a series of constructed islands in Lake Ontario, which were largely constructed in 1971. The design of the structures are credited to Eb Zeidler and the landscape to Michael Howe. The original design included space for exhibitions, an open outdoor amphitheater, a marina, restaurants, and a few rides, all publicly operated. Over time, the facility transferred from public to private hands and transitioned into a theme park with less open access to the public. Last year, Premier Doug Ford's government posted a solicitation for proposals to redevelop Ontario Place centered around the reprogramming of the site, with no stipulation to save the landscape or structures. Three development teams apparently submitted proposals, but at the moment, the nature of those responses are closed to the public. In response, the nonprofit Future of Ontario Place formed to develop alternative ideas and take into consideration the history of the facility and the voice of the surrounding communities. As part of that effort, the group is sponsoring a design competition for students across Canada. Our studio will operate parallel to that initiative, allowing students to build off the competition's resources and to submit a proposal for the competition in January. The competition committee will provide documentation for the site, as well as interviews with key stakeholders for the project. In addition, faculty from across Canada will be available for reviews with a midterm review for the competition tentatively scheduled in mid-November. Our approach for the studio will focus on the preservation of Ontario Place and its future relative to that of the greater Toronto area. Adaptive use will play a role, but we will also look deeper than a simple exercise in programming. Specifically, we'll look at both the history of the facility parallel, parallel to future challenges facing Toronto to tell both the story of its first 50 years and to create a setting for its next 50. We'll get, begin by looking at the ideas within the field of architecture that influenced the initial design of the facility, including some significant projects at contemporaneous world fairs and similar mega structures of the period when the twilight of modernism came up against the energy crisis and other global shifts of the 1970s. At the same time, we also begin to look at some narratives that explore the future of the world as the irreversible effects of climate change more fully take hold. A simple series of speculative drawings and diagrams will merge the two research paths from our, for our first attempt to merge the past and the future. From there, groups of four and five will use similar methods to develop visions of future scenarios for the City of Toronto and the context of Ontario Place, set largely in 2070. These prophecies will consider not just the effects of climate change, but also the effects of the continued transition of Toronto into a global city. They'll also allow us to avoid the problems of master planning while still ensuring we consider the relationship between our projects and its larger context. The proposals will be formed through research into contemporary issues with feedback from stakeholders and more speculative considerations. Finally, for the last half of the semester, groups of at least two will develop a more specific representation of the future of Ontario Place within the context of the above scenarios. By looking past our near future, the proposals will move beyond the easy solutions proposed by Doug Ford's development teams and look harder at the long-term challenges facing our society. I suppose I have nothing against spas or casinos, and they will certainly provide short-term a short-term answer to the site, along with some additional tax revenue. 
However, we have to ask ourselves, given the importance of the project to the city of Toronto and all that is going on in the world, if that's really the best we can do. Or if building on the foundations of the past, we might find something that challenges those more comfortable ideas and come face to face with the reality of our society.